Hey everybody, Bill here from Linux OTC and Mintcast. Uh, in a previous episode, uh, Majid was describing his experience with trying to dual boot Endeavor OS with Windows 11, and he was uh, ultimately unsuccessful in getting that to work. And I've seen this happen a couple of times, and I thought it'd be a good idea to uh, go ahead and make a video and cover some of the steps that uh, one should probably take when, uh, well, dual booting any uh, Linux operating system along with Windows 11 because there are some things that you should keep in mind and oftentimes the automatic tools just don't work. This is always going to work better for people that have a general understanding of partitions and what each type of partition does and what the file systems do and and uh, the little nuances that go along with that. So uh, I'm going to be doing this little demonstration with uh, Endeavor OS, but really the, most of this information is useful when trying to dual boot any Linux operating system. So anyway, let's get into it. I'm going to go. Sh I'm going to show everybody step by step. It's not going to take that long, but there's some things you might want to. Uh, pause and take some note of along the way. Anyway, let's get into it. All right, so here we have Windows 11. I just I just installed this. I'm doing all this work on a uh, virtual machine, but none of that matters. Everything that I show you here is going to be 100% uh, transferable to any way that you've got your uh, machine set up. Um, so the thing I want to point out that's very important is that whenever you're doing something to Windows, you want to use Windows tools to manipulate that. In other words, if you're going to change partition sizes in Windows, it's for better or worse, it's just better to use uh, Windows tools to do that. So here's here's what we're going to do. We're in Windows right now. Um, go ahead and um, and this is really the same whether you're using Windows 7, Windows 8, or Windows 10, 11. It's it, I th this tool has been exactly the same all this time. You're going to go to your your uh, Start menu and start typing the word Partition, P-A-R-T, and you'll see this tool come up in the uh, in the search. Uh, which is a create and format hard disk partitions. Go ahead and click that. Now this tool, this tool has been the same as far as I'm concerned, as far as I can remember, for a very long time. Uh, I think it was just, this has been the exact same tool, maybe with slightly different theming all the way back to the Windows 98 days. And what it'll show you here is basically a visual rep representation of your file system and as you can see the disk where uh, you can ignore this this is the CD that installed Windows um, you can see that what Windows did during the installation is it created three uh, partitions uh, the first one is very important that you don't mess with this is going to be the EFI system partition and you're gonna to have to put something in there when we get to the when we get to where we're installing uh, Linux but for now let's concentrate on this big one right here uh, and it really doesn't matter how big of a file system you're talking about here um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the biggest one and it should say something to the effect of however big it is in gigabytes and then NTFS and because NTFS is the type of file system that Windows installs the operating system on not really important but it's 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 good to know what it is and it's almost always going to be in fact I'm I'm pretty sure it'll always be a C drive um, Windows identifies its drives by a, a, a drive letter and if you don't see a drive letter that means these file systems are not mounted Windows only uses them for specific purposes but they're not mounted dur during the operation of the normal operation of the operating system anyway we're gonna right click on uh, the big one here and you see right here where it says shrink volume that's what we're gonna need to do 
it's going to take a minute to do a little bit of computation. Um, what I want to do is I just want to create, I don't know, let's create a uh, 100 megabyte uh, partition. And if you want to, if you're not sure what that is in, uh, or a 100 gigabyte partition, if you're not sure what that is in megabytes, just go ahead and bring up your uh, calculator and just multiply 100 times 1024 because there's 1024 uh, megabytes in a gigabyte 1024 you know that going on down the line equals and that's 102,400 megabytes so uh, let's go ahead and copy Paste that in here. Oh, it doesn't like the. Let's just type it. First, let's move this. One o two. Well, okay. It doesn't like the number pad either. One o two four o o. All right, and then shrink. And if you're using an SSD, it only takes a second or two, and boom. Now you've got 100 gigabytes of space in which to put your Linux operating system. And in most cases, um, that's plenty of room to get started with. Now, you're, you know, this is an arbitrary number. Um, you're, you're very likely going to be working with much bigger numbers than this. If you're wanting to... Uh, if you've got a big old hard drive and it's got like a terabyte or something, then you could, it, it's up to you. You know, what, what is your use case? If you've got more use for Windows than you do for uh, Linux, then, you know, think about how much space you need, you know. And, and if you have a question, you know, get get with me uh, on that and I can help you decide what uh, what sizes could be more appropriate for you for your use case but in this case i've uh shrunk the whole thing down now there's 399.13 gigabytes for windows and 100 gigabytes for linux now that's done i don't have to do anything else in windows let's go ahead and shut that down and i'm going to reboot into the I'm going to go through the arcane steps here of uh, give me a moment I'm going to set this back up to reboot from a CD-ROM uh, which will be the Endeavor installer and then I will restart the recording okay so I ran into a problem uh, right off the bat that uh, you you may likely run into where I tried to uh, boot from the CD-ROM and it went straight into Windows again and that was as it turns out due to uh, secure boot and in the case of Endeavor it just turns out that it's easier to you know do what you want but in my case what I did was uh, disable that so I'm going to show you real quick how I did that um, I started up the machine and then I started hitting the uh, escape button which brings me to the UEFI or the BIOS or whatever you want to call it um, and I find the option for secure boot and I disabled it and now and now when I uh, boot it up it gives me the Endeavor OS uh, menu here so I'm gonna go ahead and let's start that up now as you can see we have a working Endeavor OS desktop so alright you're in a live environment now and that's great but we want to get this installed so let's go ahead and start the installer um, just for the sake of this to keep it kind of short I'll do the offline installer which just gives you the KDE plasma desktop and some basic stuff and you'll have to run your updates uh, accordingly afterwards so 
you know, most things are going to be the same right up until we get to... Okay, so here's the first thing. You should be able to get System D boot to work, but for some reason it just seems to work better with Grub. So let's go ahead and select Grub. Let's get to this point. Now here is the next thing we need to keep, uh, the next thing we need to do, manual partitioning. So cl uh, click on manual partitioning and go to next. All right, so now it's showing you, this is a bit of a different uh, graphical representation of the uh, of the space on the disk and right here it's showing the free space this is that 100 gigabytes of free space that we created in Windows so what we're gonna do let's go ahead and double click that XT4 yep that's fine now we're gonna set that as a mount point for root which is just slash nothing and uh, you also want to put a root flag right here. That's the only flag you want to give that is root. Hit OK. All right. The next thing we want to do is find that ESP, that, that uh, EFI system partition that we saw earlier that was only 100 megabytes. That's really small. So normally if you was to create a boot partition when installing uh, Linux, you would create like 500 megabytes or something like that. And it would be big enough to go ahead and put not only the EFI system partition, but also the uh, init image and the uh, uh, Linux kernel in there as well. But this is only 100 megabytes. So we want to be real careful not to overload that. Now, the other thing we want to make sure we don't do is reformat it. So right here it says content, and leave that on keep. Now, file system FAT32, because we're not going to change, we're not going to change the file system on there. What we are going to do is mount that to slash boot slash EFI. And that's really it. It automatically picked the boot flag for us right here hit OK. Now we are set up. Now, you know, you as you move on and you get more comfortable with partitions, you might want to take, you might say, yeah, well, you know, I really don't want to just have one root partition. I want to have a par root partition and uh, then a home partition, maybe a var. And uh, I don't know, there's all kinds of partition schemes people go with, but for the sake of keeping this simple, we will uh, we'll, we'll just create one root partition, and then we will mount the EFI system partition to boot slash EFI. That way, the only thing that Linux will write to that small 100 megabyte partition is the Im information that the UEFI needs to know in order to boot the system. So we'll go on to next, just create a name, um, and let's see. I'm going to go ahead and set this up to log in automatically without asking. And right here it will show you uh, basically a before and after representation of your file system. So you can see that we're not going to reformat SDA1, which in this case is our EFI system partition. The only thing we're going to change is we're going to take the free space and we're going to turn that into Endeavor OS. So go ahead and install. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and be right back when it's done. Okay, so now we've finished the installation. And uh, the, the installer said it was done, and we went ahead and did our reboot. I went ahead and shut it completely down. That way I can show you the entire process of starting it up here. So we're going to go ahead and start the machine. Like I said, this isn't a virtual machine, but the same thing applies. And you will get... The grub screen, yay, it worked. All right, so right here it shows we have the options of Endeavor OS up here, and then there is Windows. So we'll go ahead and choose Endeavor OS and see if it boots 
correctly. And uh, that's the splash screen for the plasma desktop. It's probably going to give us a, yeah, that's a poor, let's go ahead and fix display settings. Uh, we want to change that to 1920 by 1080. Uh, that's not necessarily best for your machine, but for this particular one, that's the type of monitors I'm using. Okay, so that's done. Now, Endeavor OS gives you some options here, um, which, uh, you know, there's some stuff, you know, that's, this is all specific to Endeavor OS, but, uh, the thing I want to make clear is those steps that I went through with you, um, they're going to help you uh, in pretty much any Linux distribution that you go and dual boot with uh, Windows 11. All right, so we're back in Windows here because I want to I want to point out a couple of things that are um, they're helpful that a couple of helpful steps when you do finally get both operating systems up and running. Um, the resource I want to point you towards here is in the Arch Wiki. It is this particular page here, uh, Dual Boot with Windows, and it really is, um, it gives you some really good ideas for uh, making sure that, uh, making sure that you end up with a system that runs well both with the uh, Linux side and the uh, Windows side. Now, you know, there's a lot of stuff in here that uh, will help you out, but two things I want to point your attention towards is you want to go into Windows and disable fast startup and disable hibernation. Uh, Windows does a thing where it doesn't sh it doesn't shut the machine all the way down it puts it into kind of a transparent hibernation if you will and basically you need you want to shut that off um so and it explains here why um you can read this in more detail but you're going to want to open a command line shell uh, so in this case I'll go ahead and right click on this and give me terminal admin yes um, and I'm going to execute this command right here I'm gonna copy and paste I think Windows lets you do that Ooh, look at all that copy that paste it in here and bam you're done with that okay so that's the first thing I want to point you to the other thing is and this is probably even more uh, important is the time standards. What you want to do is you want to change or you want to make Windows use UTC as the time standard. Otherwise your clock will get messed up going back and forth between Windows and Linux. It's best to make Windows cooperate with Linux. Uh, so what we'll do, I'll, I'll show you right here, uh, system time all you have to do is from the same um, from the same command prompt just copy and paste this command right here copy it put it in there enter the operation completed successfully now the next time you reboot Windows it it will uh, it will use UTC as a time standard which will really help out in making uh, the system run well going back and forth between uh, Windows and Linux. And just to make sure everything's smooth, let's go ahead and do a restart. And I'll keep the recording going just to make sure that you can see everything is working well. Shutting down Windows. And... Okay, see... This this is something I was afraid of right here is that uh, at some point your UEFI and I'm kind of glad it did this uh, because every now and then when you do something with Windows it will 
it will manipulate the system, the EFI system partition. It will change the order in which things are, uh, in which things are loaded at boot time. So let's to make sure that there wasn't some kind of mix up. Let's shut it completely down and start it from scratch to see if it goes straight to Windows again. Because this could happen. This is why I'm glad it, hap uh, it happened right here, because this could happen after uh, a huge update as well on the Windows side. Yeah, see, it's going straight to the Windows Boot Manager. Okay. I'm going to shut this down, and then I'm going to start from scratch, and I'm going to show you how to go ahead and fix this. Okay, so what I've done is I've restarted the machine and, and I've just started hitting the escape button to get into the UAFI or what you might call the BIOS. And I've gotten to the point, and every BIOS is different. It would be impossible for me to explain. But find your way to the boot options and to the section where you can change the boot order. Because right here is where things went awry. It it basically moved things around so let's go right here change boot order as you can see if you look at this list I'm gonna go into if you look at this list it put Windows boot manager at the very top and that's not what you want you want this one at the top which is the UFI uh, QEMU mu hard disk so let's go ahead and Uh, let's see that moves it to the top save F10 yes to confirm and escape to exit keep doing that continue and now we're there. Let's go ahead and shut it completely down and just make sure. Let's go ahead and make sure. Well, now I don't have my mouse right now, so. All right, we'll go ahead and start up Endeavor then. And it looks as though it's starting up just fine. Let's go ahead and shut it down completely. Down to nothing. All right, let's start it back up again. These are just, I mean, yeah, I understand this is a virtual machine. We're just going through the motions as though it's a regular machine. And I got the boot menu and I'm in Endeavor OS. It seems to be working. All right, let's let's shut it down and make sure that it will boot. You got to be fast with this scrub screen cuz I think they only give you like 5 or 6 seconds. So let's go ahead and start this up. And then hurry up and hit your down arrow button as soon as it pops up. Windows Boot Manager. That's kind of funky, but you know, not that kind of behavior is more to do with your graphics setup than anything else. And we should have a working Windows desktop as well. So, yeah, that worked pretty good, I think. Um, you know, the, the thing is that uh, dual booting is one of those things that not as many people do anymore. But it's still helpful to know. And because there are use cases out there where you're going to run into and you need Windows for one thing and Linux for another. All right, so there you have it. Uh, just some steps to help you out. Please let me know in the comments if you've had any uh, luck doing this yourself. Um, I don't mind interacting with folks to try to help them out in any way I can. Um, the whole thing with secure boot and disabling that, you might not have to do that if you're using Ubuntu or, or Mint or something like that. 
um, Arch Linux and its derivatives are uh, have been known to have problems with secure boot. So that uh, some people have that problem, some won't. But anyway, I hope that helps you out. Uh, until then, um, it was real fun making this video, and I'm glad it I'm glad it actually worked. So we'll catch you on Linux OTC and Mintcast. Until then, I'll see you later.